After over a minute of watching a body in the water, we finally come to the title screen, and I'm genuinely confused on how they came up with Hippopotamus as the title for a movie that's about someone forcing Stockholm Syndrome on someone. Hello everyone, and as you can see, this is Hippopotamus. Spoiler alert, this is just my opinion. And for those of you that want to watch this on your own time, links to the film are in the description. Woman 1 wakes up in a room that looks like it was made to house people who were hidden away from the rest of the world. She cries out in pain as she attempts to move around, but a light comes on over the sink while a voice tells her that she's overslept. When she looks up, she meets Thomas who's kidnapped her. Essentially, Thomas gives us the whole rundown on what's going on. He just comes out and tells her that he's kidnapped her, and she'll remain there until she falls in love with him. Her name is Ruby, and she's 25 years old. Law student, parents' careers, and birthplace. This is next level stalker stuff. When Ruby asks him what he's done to her, he explains that he severed her ligaments while she was asleep. He warns her to not move if she ever wants to walk again. Even though he's kidnapped her, he at least has the dignity to not go through her purse? At least chivalry isn't dead in the kidnapping world. He brings her her birth control, painkillers, and food. He even agrees to help her go to the bathroom. And he warns her that if she tries to do this on her own, she might cause irreparable damage. Before he leaves, Ruby asks if he raped her, and he assures her that he didn't. After he leaves, Ruby notices her bracelet with her name engraved on it, and she eats the food that he brought for her. When Thomas comes back, he notices that she's refused to take her pain meds, and he urges her to take them. When he comes back the next morning, he brings her breakfast and helps her sit up again. Ruby makes her way over to her purse, and she checks to make sure all of her personal belongings are there. Afterwards, she pushes herself back over to her wall and hides a tennis ball in her back pocket. When he comes back in, he notices that she's still not taking her meds, and he forces her to take a stronger version while he's there with her. As the meds kick in, she passes out and dreams she's the body in the water, reaching for the light. When she comes to, she notices that Thomas is sitting in the room with her. She asks him who he is, and why she's there, and he repeats the same speech he had prepped in the beginning. This time, when she asks if he raped her, he's furious with the question. He tosses the chair with her purse on it and walks out. Later on, Thomas comes back, and he does physical therapy on Ruby's legs. He helps her to stretch before he gives her a sponge bath. Once Ruby is on her own, she checks her belongings again, as though she's not convinced that it's her that's in the ID. She feels around at the base of her skull because she feels something there, but when she uses the mirror to try and check, she can't tell. She uses the purse to break the mirror into pieces so she can't see, and she cuts her finger in the process. When she hears Thomas blowing his nose outside the door, she hides the piece of mirror in her bandage. That night, Thomas cleans the room and passes out in the chair, and when his alarm goes off, he gets up to set the room up properly. After sitting her up, he turns off the lights for a second, turns them back on, and tells her his whole speech. This is almost like he's conditioning her to think that she's hurt when in reality, it's all in her head. He's brainwashing her every step of the way into making herself believe all of it. Soon, Ruby figures out a way to make the sink leak, and she uses this extra time to ask what happens if she doesn't fall in love with him like he plans. I mean, when a girl says she wants a man to sweep her off her feet, I hardly think this is what they have in mind. I'm not gonna lie, that was a cute little remark, but I'm not sure how believable this change of heart is. But it works well enough to ask him for a pillow, blanket, and book. The two of them end up making small talk, but Ruby isn't quite sure how to take all of this. Thomas is true to his word, and he brings her a blow-up mattress, blanket, pillow, and book. I kind of want the blanket he brought her. Looks comfortable, and with winter coming in, it'd probably make a great blanket for the couch. So if I could just get the blanket without all the other kidnapping parts, that'd be great. Ruby remembers the book that he brought her, and Thomas mentions that it's her favorite book. Thomas has to somehow be linked to her past, or he's simply conditioning her open mind to become the girl he wants her to be. I could barely tell you my favorite book, let alone some random girls. They talk about triggers and how it can help her get her memory back, but she has to be willing and patient with him. Next, he brings her her favorite drink, and it triggers another familiar feeling. When she asks him how he knows all this about her, he simply tells her that he's done his research. Later, when she's alone, she goes to read her book, and she comes across a page that has writing all over it. She uses the mirror to figure out what it says, and she reads that it says don't trust him all over it. Just then, Thomas arrives with a table, and he sets it up for them to eat dinner together. She doesn't seem to have much of an appetite, and when Thomas asks her about her mood, she mentions the book. Then she goes on to ask how many others he kidnapped before her. She bets that she's not even special. She assumes that he just spots someone that tickles his fancy, stalks them, and researches them. She warns him that it never worked out before, and it probably never will. 
she accuses him of killing all the others. And she seems to feel bad about hurting his feelings there. The next day, Thomas leaves after checking her legs. And she goes back to the page in the book. After thinking about the trust quote, she decides to check her legs. I knew it! I freaking knew it! There isn't a thing wrong with her! But that also takes away something that could be put on him. So technically he didn't do anything intrusive to her body. Now if there's some crazy reason why she's there and he didn't really kidnap her, then there really isn't anything they could pin on him. At least nothing major. Suddenly, she gets a flash to a memory of him causing her legs to give out on her. Soon, she's back in her bed and gets a flash of a memory of her putting something in the wall. After prying the brick away, she finds that she hid matches in the wall at some point. The next time they have dinner, she asks to have a candle to set the mood, and he happily obliges. After lighting the candle, he sets the matches down on the table, and he hopes that they can forget the last dinner they had. She goes on to talk about the sinking dream she's had over and over, and she uses this as a way to distract him so she can grab the burnt match off the table. When she's done with her story, she finds that he reaches out and holds her hand now. She retracts her hands and takes the burnt match. Suddenly, we hop into a montage of Ruby working out on her own time, and playing the part with Thomas all the other times. Eventually, she notices the new book say play along, and she does it so well that it's hard to tell if she's better at being herself on her own or playing along with his fantasy. One day, Thomas comes back, and Ruby scrambles to look helpless on the bed. He questions trying to walk again before dinner, and she acts as though she's playing along with him. He helps her walk to the chair, and he mentions that progress like this means that they could eat upstairs soon. That night, he cleans himself up and presents a new kind of meal for her. She asks him why he puts so much effort in, and he says that it's a very special meal. When she tries it, it triggers another memory of a night she was eating out at a fancy restaurant. She's with another guy, but I honestly can't tell you if it's the same man or a man that Thomas is trying to emulate. The circumstances are uncanny. It looks like it might be a memory where the two of them shared a better time. Maybe she really was in an accident at some point. As the memory plays out, we see that the two of them are quite happy in each other's company, and he even gets her a necklace as a gift. Back in the kidnapping room, she explains that the memory was so clear, and she mentions that she was with him. He tells her that it was their anniversary meal. That night, Ruby brushes her teeth at the sink, and she notices the initials on the art over the sink. The next morning, she looks out her tiny window and notices someone rowing in the lake nearby. When Thomas visits later, he talks to her about another memory he has of how they first met, and he falls asleep on the bed while she does some art on the floor. What kind of kidnapper gets so lax with their victim they just fall asleep in the victim's bed? You better take away all sharp objects and make sure that the door's locked. As she reaches for the door, he wakes up and tells her that it's cold out there. She plays it off as though she was going for the ball the whole time and comes back over. That night, Thomas brushes her cheek, and a memory of him on top of her flashes through her mind. When she wakes up, he's walking out of the room. I'm sorry, but if you're starting off a dance with someone like this, someone clearly isn't comfortable. Funny enough, they cut to a memory of them dancing in a school dance, and the uncomfortableness makes perfect sense. He admits his love in the memory, and it makes you wonder how much history the two of them actually have. These are like high school sweethearts, apparently. I know high school sweethearts don't usually make it, but they don't usually end in kidnapping either. When we come back to the kidnapping room, Ruby begins to believe that they were really together all this time. She remembers the love, and she remembers the happy times they had together. Somehow believing that they were really in love before is enough for her to perform a semi-sexy striptease lap dance. Not sure a little bit of confirmation is enough to really justify anything, but to each their own. In the middle of making out, Ruby breaks down and asks how they got to this point. He explains to her that it started a long time ago, and he tells her about how she was waiting one night with her flatmate Nick. When he went to meet her, Nick forced himself on her in her room, and he beat her before raping her. When Thomas gets to the complex, he notices that the door's open, and he attacks Nick when he sees what he's done. Well, that escalated quickly. The whole thing in the last five minutes just went sky high with story. So Thomas still gets a good bit of that sympathy we talked about earlier, and he managed to save Ruby in the process. Thomas takes her to a different apartment, and when she comes to, she doesn't remember him or anything that happened. Thomas refuses to get the authorities involved, and he gets his friend to drive them away. Thomas blames himself for not being there with her in the first place, but he makes sure that he's there for her now. Thomas took Ruby as far north as possible, and eventually, they came across an island with an abandoned farm. After checking out the premises, he comes across the basement, which he decides is the perfect place to keep her safe in. As he comes to take care of her, he can't stand the look on her face as she doesn't know who she is, and she thinks that he's there to hurt her. He doesn't give up, though. He learns everything he can about her amnesia, and he sets up an environment that helps her try to form new memories. 
He learns that her mind resets if she sleeps for too long, and he learns how to trigger old memories from objects, tastes, and smells. If there isn't some crazy twist in the end, Thomas is the perfect boyfriend slash husband. The dedication and motivation is inspiring. So especially significant emotional memories are stored in different parts of the brain. That's damaged. Hippocampus, exactly. So that means that they should all be retrievable. Finally, I was really stretching my imagination to figure out how the hippopotamuses fit into the story here. I guess that's a creative way to work it in. He had tried different scenarios, but kidnap victim gave him the most time to gain her trust naturally. He tells her that he's finally cured her, and she rejoices as the memories all make sense to her now. After a little intimate time, Thomas falls asleep, and Ruby wakes up first. Okay, so someone here's wrong, and I'm not jumping to conclusions anymore. Okay, so that was essentially it. She stabs him, makes her way outside since he's dead inside, and she looks around to see the abandoned farmhouse on an island. She runs to let the boat into the water, and she somehow just passes out right there on the shoreline. When she comes to, she's in a makeshift hospital room, and a familiar voice is talking to her. Okay, he was definitely lying motionless in a pool of blood that he had leaked out of his own mouth, but somehow he survived? Where did he get all that furniture too? And I already know a lot of you will debate this in the comments, but the answer of whether he was telling the truth or if she was really the victim is completely up in the air. Let's hear what you think. Also at 1 hour 17 minutes, there's a voice heard that says when you wake up. Not sure what it is, but it's there. Creepy. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next, and I'll see you in the next video.